What's going on, guys? Chuck back here again with a very special. I don't know how special it is. There's been a million of them out there already in the last couple of days. That's right. It is one more <laughs> uh, Scream Factory Friday the 13th Deluxe Edition box set. Uh, not really an unboxing. I'm not going to actually do the typical unboxing um, simply because I record these at night and. I got this box like it was delivered. UPS literally backed into my driveway about 1.30 in the afternoon. And I'm, like I said, I do these at, at, at night. And perfectly honest, I don't have that kind of patience to wait. So it's been open. <laughs> but I will uh, go through it uh, here anyways. So, and, you know, give my thoughts on a few things. Um, just in the overview. And just my thoughts on maybe the, the films themselves. To start off with... Just for completeness sake, as you see, I did get the cool box that is so big I can't stick it in the thing. <laughs> but this packaging I thought was really cool. I really love the little uh, insert that they had in the center to keep it uh, the package itself safe. And, of course, here's my poster and lithograph. Now, I'm keeping these in the tube until I get frames. Um, so there's... there's I haven't looked at them yet, but everything looks safe. I'm assuming it's all good. So here's hoping. But like I said, I don't want to pull them out um, until I get frames to put them in. Plus, I have kids. So it's probably good to keep them as safe as possible. Now, that being said, there we go. Here's what we all came to see. This beautiful, beautiful box set. <laughs> Take a look at the back here. Mine the glare. I love this artwork. This is a good sturdy box set too. I like this. This is there's Tater Sack Jason, as you collectively know around here. <laughs> Again, get the glare off there, but and <clears throat> it's beautiful, beautiful artwork all the way around. You know, and I'm I'm very excited to get the well, I don't know lithograph to see the whole thing. It's really cool. And if you notice here. What's really cool is that they have, Shout Factory has used the Friday 13th font for all of these films. Not just the Paramount ones, but even the New Line ones are using the, the um, what you see here, uh, they, they're all very uniform looking across here. They're using the, the Friday font. More on that later as we get into these. So let's start off. Let's get them out of here. <laughs> With the original, Friday the 13th. So you're back. I got a little glare. I'm trying to avoid that. Sorry. Sorry about that. Nice. There we go. I'm back. I'm looking at this camera. I apologize. I'm kind of figuring out um, the reverse angle here is really throwing me off. So I'm, I'm getting used to that too. <laughs> the reverse artwork, which I believe, which is a great piece. Um, where are we at? Here we go. <laughs> which I believe is the Warner Brothers uh, poster art for overseas, which is really cool. I like that a lot. <laughs> you got part two. You know, everyone's very excited about this one uh, with all the special features on here. Now, um, some people made a point that the, the deleted scene, the, the, the uh, newly found gore effects uh, it's not listed as a special feature on here, but it's here. My feeling is probably that because you know, they got that whole thing, you know, it's a fantastic story. If you've gone on Facebook and I mean, Samuelson Studios and look up how they found that 40 um, year old VHS tape with all that footage on it, um, it, it seemed like it was very last minute. So, my, my thought is they probably had all this packaging already pre made and ready to go before they were really able to get that. So, they wasn't able to you know advertise it on here. Uh, Properly as such, but it, it's there. There you go. Jason's mom's head. And just basic pop out. Pop out. Pop out. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I will get this mirror image thing worked out, I promise. But there's kind of the basic uh, alternate artwork. Definitely. The single of the act is much cooler. Now, this one, 
Oh, let me back up. Let me talk a little about this one. This was my first exposure to Friday the 13th. And not in actually seeing the movie, per se. Because uh, I was, what, this is, I was probably like five when this, when it came out. I've been five years old when this movie came out. But what I remember distinctly was uh, seeing a Fangoria magazine article about uh, this movie and seeing the footage, or not seeing the footage, but seeing some stills from it, specifically uh, Jason, you know, the panel where he's head and the scene, you know, find the bodies around that. I remember that image, seeing that, that just terrified me as a little kid. And I don't know why, but it always stuck with me. But I never, I didn't see it till years later. I remember seeing like an ad for it in the little HBO booklet <laughs> that came out, but I never, you know, with the famous uh, still of uh, Amy Steele with the pitchfork, you know, right at you, uh, pre pre 3D. But yeah, that one always stuck with me. That was my um, introduction to Friday the 13th. And then we have my personal favorite, Friday the 13th Part 3. And one of the biggest selling points of this set for me was getting this in true uh, 3D. Um, I'm lucky enough that I actually have a, uh, a 3D TV. I know that's kind of a it's a lost thing now. No one has that. They don't make them anymore. I got mine probably about eight years ago when they were still popular. And really, I had no intentions of, you know, and I was like, yeah, it was affordable. It's a 3D. Why not get one? You know, and I've seen a couple movies in 3D, but, you know, they're okay. It was a big deal. But with a few exceptions, you know, like especially the older 3D films, I think of, you know, films I always said were made for 3D or better in the 3D format. And this was one of them. Um, and I still hold up that this is the best 3D film I've ever seen in a the theater. I managed to get to see this probably about three times in a theater uh, for a special revival uh, showings, and it was amazing. I mean, the effects really jumped out at you. It was great. Definitely, again, the hands down, the best 3D film, 3D experience I've seen in the theater, you know, um, really good. And I, 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 this was, <laughs> but yeah, I popped this one out first and put it in the TV to test. I was like, very excited about this, and it looked fantastic. Um, the 3D was great. I was so excited about that. And let's see. The reverse artwork on this, you flip it around here and one handed, is a little 3D image. I believe, I want to say that was kind of like the uh, soundtrack artwork. It was, very, it was a, like a hologram image, a lenticular, actually, which is really cool. You know, obviously it's not there in this image, but, you know, I think the image for it was lenticular. It had that whole reflecting thing, which, you know, Kind of went with the whole 3D, which is really cool, but definitely fun. And these first three films, probably the ones I was exposed to the most, thanks to USA Network. They had a marathons on all the time, and I actually recorded those three on VHS from those from from those uh, marathon viewings. And for the longest time, that's the only versions of those movies I saw. So very uh, choppy, edited, um, cut, really bad movies. So it wasn't until I was Years later, when I was able to buy the VHS tapes, so I finally saw these movies, the theatrical versions, and it was like a whole other experience for me. So, really cool. Now, the final chapter. To me, this is like the end of the, you know, Jason's release, you know, the scary uh, cycle of films, if you will. One through four, it'll make, you know, there's a good, there's a terror to it. Um, it's not so much like you're rooting for Jason. There's still some suspense, a little bit left to it. That that menace is there. Uh, after I think they tr they try it in five. It's with the Who Done It, but after that, it's basically you're rooting for Jason from six on out, and it's just all about the kills and the and the fun. Now this one, unfortunately, when I got it, you can tell these were mass shipped and, and quickly because this the cover was kind of thrown in a little crooked. In this case, and it kind of crinkled up a bit here. A little, and you see, there's actually a little, where's that? A little bit of a nick there. A little bummed about that, but I'm not going to sweat it. <laughs> you know, it did make a little crinkle, but you know, it was, what can you do? Um, reverse artwork. Basically, it's the book. I like the tagline on this, but the artwork on the other side with the, the mask and the Night Through the Mask is definitely the more iconic image, but I do like the tagline of three times before you have felt the terror, 
known the madness, lived the horror, but this is the one you've been screaming for. That's a great tagline. Or the thing was it uh, Friday, I think it was like June 13th is Jason's unlucky day. But I actually was lucky enough uh, two years ago at our local drive-in to get to see this and part five back to back. It was really cool. And part five was in 35 millimeter, which was really fun. Speaking of part five, here we go. What many consider a black sheep, um, some will say it's the grimiest, a <laughs> uh, little dirty, but I don't know. It's fun. It's grown on me over the years. Um, I really like it. It's definitely a, got a lot of appeal. It's got a lot of uh, good kill scenes. Um, it's got Pamela Sue Voorhees. That's really all you need, Pamela Sue Voorhees. <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> now this artwork, a lot, there were a lot of people online who were kind of upset about this artwork and not having the classic um, the VHS cover with the weird hockey, the hockey mask from Road Warrior, basically. <laughs> Lord Humongous thing it is. Um, kind of mask that's on that V. that's famous for the VHS cover. But this was the uh, actual r real artwork. I think Shout Factory is more about getting the traditional artwork or, you know, the original poster artwork as opposed to VHS labels. So a lot of people were upset with that. And I know that the alternate is the actual one sheet. Now, but again, people were said that this wasn't represented or the hockey mask is represented. However, if they're noticing, and this is a point I made kind of earlier about the spines having, you know, the, the Friday font. It doesn't really come at this point, but if you look right there, where are you at? Right there. Or man. <laughs> I'm sorry, but right there, represented on the spine, there's your little hockey mask. And I can't get that right in the camera perfectly. So it's there, folks. You just got to have a look. <laughs> but, and I want to point out, you know, that's one of the things I think is really cool about this is that Danny Steinman, who directed this, no longer with us, he directed uh, one of my favorite Linda Blair exploitation films, Savage Streets. Why is that important? Don't know. Just want to say it. <laughs> now, up next, a very popular fan favorite, Friday the 13th, Part 6, Jason Lives. This was the first Friday the 13th I saw on a big screen. And that, when it first came out, I saw it at the drive-in. And it was so cool. Now, I want to say that, and I'm hoping I'm right about this, so my memory isn't fuzzy because I'm pretty sure they came out at the same time, that I saw this on Double Bill with Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2 when it came out. I could be mistaken about that. I could have those facts flip, uh, switched together, but I'm pretty sure that was a Double Bill. This one... No, rever no artwork, um, or reverse artwork, artwork, just this great photo of Jason there. Pretty cool. What I'm really excited to on a special features, um, not on this disc, but on the bonus set, is they actually had the Alice Cooper video, uh, Man Behind the Mask, which is a fantastic song. Uh, here we have Jason versus Carrie, also known as Friday the 13th, Part 7, The New Blood. Um, another... I think it's a fan favorite. A lot of people are um, love the look of Jason in this one. Uh, obviously, this is the first one with Kane Hodder as Jason, first of four. And but people so badly want to see the uncut version of the of the kills in this. I know. I think one of the special features on here, at least I know, it was on the from Crystal Lake to Manhattan box set. Uh, and all those features have been poured over this, which is fantastic too. Have some deleted, excuse me, have some deleted scenes uh, from Part Seven, but you know they're VHS, they're really grainy, not very good quality. And from what uh, was been said about those scenes, they're pretty much lost, destroyed by Paramount or whatever. That was all remaining is what uh, director John Carbiegler had. Um, again, you know, no longer with us. But one of my favorite quotes of his has been said in uh, about this was that the rating board raped my movie. <laughs> I always love that. It's a fantastic quote. Um, my friend Elizabeth McIntyre hates this movie. 
I don't know why, but she really just can't. She thinks it's stupid, but you know. <laughs> so there's that great shot with the axe. But I know it's got a lot of hits, and I enjoy it. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't really hate any Friday the Thirteenth film. You know, I have obviously some are favorites, some are you know, actually no, there I love them all. I sit there and watch them all. They just they're fantastic. Even Jason takes Manhattan. Concept great, execution. Eh. One of the things I love about this was I liked the that King Hunter went on the Arsenio Hall show to promote this in full Jason Garb, in full character. Didn't say a word to the whole interview, just stared at Marcy. Oh, it's fantastic. If you've never seen it, go look it up on YouTube. It's hilarious. And it's great dedication to character. Um, a lot of people, again, upset. They wanted the ultimate artwork of the famous teaser poster of the I Love New York, or Heart New York, with Jason slashing through, but that's what you get. Which is still kind of a cool meta image, if you will. Um, but of course, that was pulled down because of um, legal action from the New York City Tourist Committee, I believe it was. But it was still a great poster. And this also has a fantastic teaser. I love the, the teaser for this movie, which I'm sure is on there. Of everything the serene, everything's happy, go lucky, then turn there's Jason, and New York has a new problem. That's great. Now, a very divisive film among fans. Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday. I really enjoy this movie. I'm going to be that guy. I really love this movie. I think it's a lot of fun. I saw this when it came out. It was funny because I didn't even know it was under no promotion about whatsoever. I think we were at the, the theater and I saw posters. Hey, Jason goes to hell. What? When did that come out? I don't know, but let's go see it. And I, it was different without question. It was not what I was used to. But I also knew this was a new line cinema, Friday the 13th, no longer a Paramount Friday the 13th. So I just went with it. And I had a lot of fun with this movie. And we saw it nine times. That's right. I'm going to say it right here. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm just going to admit it. I saw it nine times and loved it every single time. Uh, I, I really, really enjoyed this movie. And then at a comic convention, I got a bootleg copy of the um, you know extended director's cut with the uh, all the extra footage on there, which is really cool on VHS. And then, of course, the unrated version I had on DVD. So this was really cool. This, too, the first time this unrated version is being put on Blu-ray. Apparently, it wasn't on the last complete box set that, that was put out. So, this first time it's on here. So, this will be really cool. Now, when I was saying how they had the font here, very much like the the old Friday font, you know, the and not the typical. You know, a lot of people have noticed that the some of these later on, the reverse artwork the poster is the same. Well, if you look, the, I'm pull this out even better. The spine is changed to the original font. So you can reverse the same artwork. I mean, obviously, the, the word is like a different thing. You don't have the Jason. It's just kind of a poster, teaser poster because it does have Jason Goes to Hell on it like this side does. Just has the, you know, the copy or ad copy or whatever they would call it. But the spine has the original. Where am I at here? The spine has the original font that you see on the uh Previous DVDs, VHS, whatever the case may be. And that's the same case for all the films going forward in this set. Um, that the reverse artwork, even though if they have other artwork or not, they would have that original font on the spine. Here's another one that I had no idea was even being released. Jason X. And this is another one that could be divisive. Um, a buddy of mine went and saw this. Um, I think we, we came across a trailer on, on the internet, and we're like, "What? What? J what? Jason Space? Oh my gosh, we got to see that. That's gonna be just crazy as hell." And sure enough, it was. And it's it's just bonkers. <laughs> um, oh my god! But it is so much fun. It's a lot of fun. People again, one of the ones probably divisive. But I had so much fun with this movie. It's so out there. It's so crazy. I'm not a big fan of the Uber Jason um, look, but it's it's cool. 
You know, and again, this one doesn't really have alternate artwork. It's pretty much the same thing. But you do have the original uh, Jason X font as opposed to the where you at here, <laughs> as opposed to the, that there. So it's again, it comes down to a matter of preference. But and I think the back images are different as well. Yeah, you know, you've got here, and then you know, well, here we go. <laughs> there. Up next, me and that same friend who saw Jason X went and checked out Freddy vs. Jason on this. This, uh, I like it, don't get me wrong, but I, I have a hard time calling this a Friday movie. To me, this always felt more of a Nightmare on Elm Street film. This is, feels more like a Freddy film and, and, and Jason's guest starring in it. But for completion's sake, you put it in here, and I'm I'm okay with that. But it is oh, probably more over the top than it needs to be in terms of gore and violence. I mean, it's fun. There's no question about it. But it's probably a little more over the top. And some, it, I think it suffers too from uh, Ronnie Hugh not knowing anything about his franchises, just doing whatever and kind of making it up as he goes, and he can tell. So it su struggles a bit. Robert England's great, because Robert England's always great as, as Freddy, but I think we still would have liked to have had Kane Hodder as a more menacing Jason instead of... Nothing against uh, uh, Ken Kersinger, but I just, you know, because he, I mean, he played how he was told to play it, is, you know, slow, lumbering, and, and dumb, and, you know, we've seen that Jason that's more animated, more menacing than that and has a little more thing going on in his mind than what we're seeing in, in Freddy vs. Jay's more of a puppet and it kind of takes away from him. Like I said, this is a this is a Nightmare on Elm Street movie. This is a Freddy movie, not really a Friday the 13th movie, but you know what? It's got some, you know, it's got a great kill. The the bed kill is amazing. It is fantastic. <laughs> I still love that. Um, so it's a lot of fun. <laughs> And that brings us to the remake. Now, um, I've only seen this one time, and that was in the theater. And uh, to be perfectly honest with you, it didn't leave a huge impression on me. I think coming out of it, I was okay with it. I thought, well, you know, they were closer to in spirit than what you know, Rob Zombie's Halloween was. That's for damn sure. <laughs> and um, don't even get me started on that mess. But I still felt it was something was missing. I'm not sure what it was, and I haven't seen it since then. So I'm looking forward to checking this out again to get a you know a different perspective. And I haven't seen the killer cut, obviously, which is this has the killer cut as well as the theatrical cut. So I'm looking forward to checking it out and, and reevaluating it and see how it goes. I know, like I said, I know I didn't hate it like Rob Zombie's Halloween. You know, I just it didn't leave an impression on me. But I felt at least a it was closer in tone to a Friday the Thirteenth movie than what that direct that Rob Zombie put out. Uh, and this has got a cool looking cover. Now here's another issue too um, that I had, unfortunately, is that again with that shipping, I do have a little bit of a rip. Can't really see it down here. Uh, minor thing, annoying. I'm not going to fret over it. But you have this cool alternate artwork. I can't get this. Angle right, where we at this way <laughs> with the teaser poster, which I think is really cool. Over here, yeah, there we go. This whole backwards thing is just throwing me off. I need a better setup, guys. I know I'm very new to this. <laughs> and there was also some complaints I've seen people complain because what you're getting is the regular, where are we at, regular. Uh, Original New Line Blu-ray and says something different from Shop Factory, but I think it's the same way for Freddy vs. Jason too. You're getting basically the same sets, but you know they're fairly new. What are you going to do? And then you have, which I'm looking forward to digging into, the bonus material on two discs, two discs of bonus goodies right there. So, 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 so much good stuff in here. I can't wait to. Do a deep dive and get it really get into it, and then, much like the Halloween said, you've got this great, great booklet. You know, great glossy you know color pages. So much stuff in here. 
I'm looking forward to reading this. You know, I have Crystal Lake Memories, which is a fantastic book, and I have The Making of Friday the Thirteenth, which is not on, in, on par as um, detail as Crystal Lake Memories, obviously, but it's still you know. If you don't want to get into a deep dive, if you haven't read it, yeah, it's still recommended. It's very good. It's got a lot of the same, you know, info on the making of the series, just more the Cliff Notes version, if you will. But that's still good. <laughs> so that's the set. And it's a fantastic set. You know, uh, there was a lot of questions about the asking price of this because, you know, I, it's, it went for like 150 plus at Chow Factory. Um, pre-order, which I pre-ordered within an hour of the announcement. I've been waiting for July, since July for this. And the reason why it took an hour is because the, it took that long was because the site crashed <laughs> from all the traffic. But, you know, to me, so very much worth it. Um, I didn't buy the box, the, the complete last complete uh, box set that was out there. I wasn't really Leary, or uh, there was a little, uh, I'm trying to say, I wasn't high on it. It didn't really seem like it grabbed me. Um, probably because at that point I had bought those deluxe edition DVDs uh, for those first eight. And I had, you know, um, uh, Jason Goes to Hell, Freddy vs. Jason, and Jason X on pretty good DVDs. And it didn't, you know, I don't know, I wasn't really jumping at it. It's, didn't see any, nothing was really in there that I really wanted to <clears throat> get. Um, but when this came out, see, the biggest thing for this, for me, uh, was the real 3D, because I've always wanted part three in real 3D. Um, and not the anaglyph 3D that we got with the blue and red glass, because that just did not come out at all very well. But in the real Blu-ray 3D. So that was a big selling point for me. And just, I don't know, the presentation sold me. I mean, this, the, the, when they, I saw the artwork they put up there, what they were going to do was great. I was like, this is fantastic. You I mean, I, I had the Halloween box set and I thought like, this is a great companion piece. I will say that in the mock-up artwork they had, these cases were blue. I know that's a lot of people. And they wanted a black case like Halloween, which I didn't think would be a good idea because I think Halloween, just to stand alone with the black cases. However, I liked the blue, the art, the mock art with the blue blue cases. I thought the blue cases made the art really pop from what I saw. I don't have a problem with the clear cases. I mean, that's still cool too, but I really like the blue. Um, from what I can tell, I'm the only one. So what are you gonna do? <laughs> but it was, I think it's a fantastic set. Um, I'm looking forward to doing a serious deep dive into, um, Checking out all these features and rewatching these movies, um, which is cool because a couple weeks I actually have a big uh, Friday Thirteenth party planned. Um, where we're showing like the part we last year we did this, but we showed parts one through four, and we had a big uh, costume party. We did um, trivia. I had a raffle drawing. I'm doing the same thing this year. I call it Long Night at Camp Blood. This is Long Night at Camp Blood Part Two. This time we're doing uh, four through eight. So. Guess what I'm going to be using as my source material. <laughs> so that should be really exciting. And now, as a just a comparison, so we have the Halloween set, or excuse me, the Friday the Thirteenth set and the Halloween set side by side. These are beautiful together. I mean, they're just fantastic. I mean, Scream Shout Factory did a wonderful job on both these. I'm glad I got both of these. I mean, they just look really good together. Turn around here. Oh, they're falling out. <laughs> Those, that's beautiful. Now, what's missing from this picture? I would say a definitive version of a Nightmare on Street box set. So right now, as it stands, let's get you guys over here for just a second. This is probably the best Nightmare on Street box set that's been released to date um, and this came out in 1999 and this is DVD but it's still an amazing set I mean it still looks good it, it's got a lot of features I mean they could probably do so much more it cleaned up it came with 3d glasses which 
I know this is a, you know, a, um, not a, a Nightmare on Elm Street uh, video, but, you know, 3D glasses. But I think it's cool that I want to bring out where are they at. I still have my actual from seeing Freddy said the final nightmare. I still have my 3D glasses from that actual viewing in this set, <laughs> along with the glasses that are provided. And a few extras, I think. I think I've accumulated 3D glasses for the set. But this is the last really good box set, I think, that's been put out for Nightmare on Elm Street, and it deserves some love. And you've got <clears throat> Halloween. Let me get this down here a little bit and put this in. Now, and Friday the 13th, all these. We need to get one of this in Blu-ray, a nice box set. It's, it's well past time. Hopefully, I'm sure that's something that Stream and Factory has been working on because they were dealing with new lines. I'm sure it probably came to the table. Um, you know, so I'm, who knows? In a couple years, we'll be reaching probably, what, Nightmare's anniversary in 2024, if we're still around for that. <laughs> Maybe we'll, we'll have that. But back to Friday. Again, a fantastic set. To me, I mean, it's it's definitely worth it. It's got loaded with so many new features, plus all the old features from the old sets ported over to here. Uh, to my knowledge, uh, I think there's probably like maybe one or two that maybe not come over, but as far as I know, everything from previous release, I know everything from that Crystal Lake to Manhattan box set has been put over here. That's fantastic. And they, they went above and beyond on this set. So, I mean, Shout Factory really did it with this. I mean, it, this is a fan love right here. I mean, Paramount and New Line obviously didn't care enough about the series to do anything or put the work in that Shout Factory did. So, you know, my hat's off to them. Kudos to that. Now, and also on a side note, a lot of people <clears throat> were upset or complaining, you know, well, it's not quite clear why couldn't they put Chris Lake Memories in there or, you know, his name was Jason. And I can understand that, but, you know, and here's Chris Lake Memories, which is a must-have also. But consider this is a two-disc set. It's, you know, a seven-hour documentary, roughly. You add this on here, and that price point's probably going to go up even higher and a lot of people complain about the price point is very high for this, but it's probably getting jacked up even higher than this. And you can just pull, buy, go and buy this separately, and it's okay. Same thing with his name is Jason. You can get this fairly cheap too, you know, uh, on Amazon. This is I've had this for a while, so that price point fourteen ninety nine. You can probably get a lot cheaper now. In fact, I think I just bought one for you know recently again. But you know these are available on their own. Um, so I think it's. It, it would have been nice to have them. Sure, if for complete sake, it's great, but I don't think it's necessary. You know, they're here. You can get them separately. And I think, you know, again, they they put so much into the set, and it shows. Um, if it was available and they could find it, I'm sure they tried their hardest to get it on here. And, you know, again, thanks to, to Shout Factory for that. So that is it for that. And... Whew, again, work cut out for me uh, the next week or so. I got to find something to do with those kids. I have to get rid of them so I can watch these movies. <laughs> On a side note, again, another side note. I have a lot of side notes. I have a lot of sides. I'm a big guy, plenty of sides. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Me and uh, my son are going to drive in tomorrow night uh, to see it. They're going to be showing Friday 13th Part 2. So that should be a lot of fun. Oh, and some other great horror films. Um, but. So, yeah, that's the box set. I know there are a billion of these out there on YouTube. Um, kind of hard to be any different, but I thought I'd you know, give you a little more info. <laughs> or at least, you know, my personal opinions, like they matter. But I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, this is Chuck signing off.